what's going on, Cloud Scholars? I hope I found you in good spirits. My name is Kieran Tross, and I'm here with another how-to video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to migrate uh, user risk uh, and sign-in risk policies uh, and implement them within conditional access. Now, this is a new feature that Microsoft just recently uh, came out with. Uh, I would say around January 6th, January 7th, they came up with an article just talking about, you know, they've added this feature to conditional access. Now, the great thing is uh, when it comes to identity protection, you have these two features um, that allow you to really monitor and automate how you want to secure your environment. Access control policies can be applied to protect organizations when a sign-in or a user is detected to be at risk. Such policies are called risk-based policies. Now, originally, if we go into Azure Active Directory, and I come down here to Security, Identity Protection, you see right here we have the User Risk Policy, and then we have our Sign-In Risk Policy. And it doesn't really give us too much to do. It just says, you know, you want to apply it to all users, you want to apply it to a group of users, and then you have your Sign-In Risk, and so on and so forth. Now, what, what they have come up with now is moving it to Conditional Access. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to make that migration? So migrating uh, your risk policies from identity protection to conditional access, there's a couple of features that you, you're getting. You're in enhancements, I should say. One, you enhance diagnostic data. Next, you get report-only mode integration. I'll talk a little bit about that later on. We also have the graph API support. Plus, we have use more conditional access attributes like sign-in frequency in the policy. Now, the thing is, this is what Microsoft has on their website, and I'm going to leave the link in the description as well so you can read the article. But what I would also say to you is you also get more flexibility. So with the conditional access, you had all users, or you could throw a group in there. Uh, one of the conditional access with the risk policies. Now, with conditional access, you can have a number of, of conditional access policies that are applied to risk. So let's just say you have uh, user sign-in risk uh, 1A. I like to do my uh, conditional access policies by like 1A, 1B, 1C, and then 2, 2A, 2B, 2C. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when you look at your conditional access policies, they can get really cumbersome. You can have a lot of conditional access policies and you got to read through it. If you number them and then you number them based on what they're doing, so you can say user 1A, user risk policy, and then you can say apply to marketing team. 1B, user risk policy, applied to financial team you're able to now say okay you know i want to apply these risk and have these different levels based on who the user is so contractors you'd probably go a little bit higher depending on your organization if you have a situation where your organization uh the hr team or whoever brings in consultants doesn't always have the great greatest communication and people leave the consultation firm without anyone knowing that's another identity there that is just in, in the wasteland and is not being used. It can be compromised and you would never know. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why you want to come up with these conditional access policies because now with this conditional access policy with using user risk policies associated with it, you're able to now say, okay, I know these users are external users. They need to get access to our resources, but I also want to be more restrictive with them. So let me jump back over to the portal. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump over and I'm going to come back over to security and I'm going to go to conditional access. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and they have this new policy from template. So I just want to click on that just to kind of go through how that looks. But then we're going to jump over to the risk policies that I want to create for you all. But you have all these different options here. So you have secure foundation, you have zero trust. You have remote work, you have protect administrators, and you have emergent threats. You have all these different templates that you can choose from. But what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here to conditional access. And within conditional access, we're going to go to new policy. So in this policy, what we're going to do is we're going to call it, we're going to call this policy user risk policy. So we're going to say 1A user risk policy and then we can apply it to a specific team if we want to supply a specific team so we could just say contractor which is fine so when it comes to assignments we're going to say users we can have it to a specific group 
So we're going to say users and groups. We're going to go contractor. And then click select. And then next, cloud apps. We can see all cloud apps. We can select certain cloud apps. Let's go and be specific. Let's see what we have here. Office 365. Fine. We'll just choose that one. And then when it comes to conditions, here is where we have the different new policies that are coming up. So it says control access based on signals from conditions, list like risks, the device platform, location, client apps, or device state. So this is new where it says, you know, uh, like risk. So this one is the uh, user risk policy. So we're going to come up to user risk. And over here, we get this choose to say, okay, configure user risk levels needed for the policy uh, to be enforced. Now, some of you may be thinking to yourself, well, how do I know which one I want to do? Do I want to do high? Do I want to do medium? Do I want to do low? And now, and what I would say to you is this, how do we go about defining this risk? This is entirely up to the organization. Organizations must decide the level of risk they want to require access control on balancing user experience and security posture. So one thing I want to bring up is Microsoft's recommendation. Microsoft's recommendation is uh, for the below risk policy configurations to protect your organization. So when it comes to user risk, they say it requires secure password reset when user risk is levels high. Azure AD MFA is required before the user can create a new password with uh, self-service password reset to remediate their, their risk. And then their recommendation when it comes to sign-in risk policy is require Azure AD MFA when sign-in risk level is medium or high, allowing users to prove it them by using one of their registered authentication methods for media in the sign in risk. Now you can continue doing what you want to do. Now that's their recommendations, but you can say, all right, you know, these are contractors and we don't really have the best communication uh, channel with uh, HR who's bringing in the contractors or whichever department is bringing in the contractors. And, you know, three months ago we realized, hey, you know, this user hasn't signed in, in the last 60 days. And then we're like, oh crap they were let go. They're no longer with the company, but their account is still there. That's identity that is that is still rampant. That's that identity that is not being managed and it really should have been disabled. So those are the reasons why this conditional access policy is so powerful because now you can say, okay, I am going to now add a user risk specifically for contractors because I know that that's a gap that we have within the organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to high well, first I gotta click configure. I'm gonna click on high and I'm gonna click on done. And then next thing I'm gonna do when it comes to access controls, it says grant. I have a whole bunch of different things I can say here. I can do require multi-factor authentication. I can do a whole bunch of other stuff that I can put in here. Um, but over here, I'm gonna say, okay, let's require multi-factor authentication, which is fine. And then I can also put down require password change. And then I could click select. So it's giving me an error message saying all cloud apps must be selected when required password change. So what I'm going to do is it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say all cloud apps just to kind of get rid of that. And then when it comes to sessions, this is where it's extremely important for you to put the right information in. So for the order for this to really run the right way, you really should have for sessions, you should be signing in frequency and you see everything else is actually vagued out. And it needs to be every time. So it's already pointing it to us saying, hey, it needs to make sure this is on every time because this is now a user risk policy. So it's giving me that. And then what we want to do is I can turn this on in the organization. But what I can do is I could put it on report only mode. So one thing I want you to realize is if we're talking about migrating it from the original setting, which is over here, this user risk policy, you can have both of them running simultaneously. So you can have your user risk policy, whatever you have for your organization already established. And then you can come back over here and you can set it up and you can put it on report only mode. And the great thing about report only mode is you can then go into Azure um, Active Directory, go into sign-ins, and then you can see exactly how that's working. And then you can also pull reports at the same time, just to make sure that things are working in the right state that way you want them to, and then when you're ready to pull the trigger, you put it on, and then you go back over to identity protection, and then you would turn this off. Now, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to do another policy. Now, the other policy that we need to create is going to be the sign-in risk policy. So for this one, I had that one as 1A. I'm going to say this is 2A. 
to a sign in risk policy. And this is going to be for contractors as well. And then when it comes to this, I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be for groups. And I'm going to say contractors group. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click select. I'm going to make sure I don't get that error, nasty message again. I'm saying all cloud apps conditions. I'm going to go to sign in risk. And then I'm going to make sure that's on configure. And then I can say high, medium, low. doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll just do it as a, uh, you know, I'll throw it as a medium. Um, and then what I'll do next is I'll go to access controls. And then it's like, you know, I'll grant access. Do I block access? I can block it if I want to. Or I can say, okay, you know, require password change if I need to require password change when it comes to uh, sign in risk. Um, and then I can just say, all right, we'll just say we can block the access, right? So we'll block access for this one. And then what we'll do is we'll say sign in frequency. This has to be on every time. So that's already due to make this work the right way is to say, okay, sign in frequency has to do on every time. And then sign in frequency every time session control requires a required multi factor thing grant. So let me go back here and it is making me a liar. So I can't block it. So I'll say grant. And let's see if that gives me the okay. All right, we're not getting any error message anymore. And then we click put on report only more and we click create. All right, and that's pretty much it. So once we have both of those policies here, and, and one thing I want you to notice is look how neat this looks. Now I have one A dot after, and this is one two. I can easily just go in and change that if I wanted to change that just to make it look neater. Let's see, I think I had one A, what did I have on the other one? Let me just make sure that I have it the same. One A, A, two A, let's change that. And I can just do two A, and then just make sure it's neat. And then it, you see what happens here. I see I have all these different uh, policies here, but when I start doing this one A, two A, then what I would have here is one B user risk policy, and I'll say for finance. One C user risk policy, and I'll say for whatever group. And this one I would say two B sign in risk policy. Is it just makes it easier for you to read. That's one thing I like to do when I'm doing uh, this setup for my conditional access policies, but obviously this is a lab, um, so it can kind of get a little messy, but that's perfectly fine. But for a production environment, I would recommend you doing something such as that. So that is pretty much it. That is how you go about migrating over to your conditional access policies from the identity protection policies as well. Um, so once more, once you're done doing it and you're, you're looking at your diagnostic settings, so you would come here as your active directory and then you'd come over here to sign in logs and you would be able to see and filter out how the signings are coming through within your organization and you would say oh okay i can see what policies are being applied and you can see your conditional access and you can see what's being applied for each user um, and then you would see stuff that's coming up in report only mode and so on and so forth and this is where you would say okay the policy is actually working for you so um, I hope that this information I provided you today was beneficial. Uh, if you have any questions or, or anything as such, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, I'm definitely uh, willing and um, eager to answer all of your questions. Um, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button uh, here at Cloud Scholars. Uh, our goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you. See you next time.